Today's video will be a little bit different than what you're normally used to. And today I'll be sharing one of my Notion templates that I've created. And this will be my first live interactive video showcasing what I've created and how you can use it. Depending on how this video does, I might make more of these for some of my free templates so that you know how it works before considering to download it. If you don't know, I have free templates on my Gumroad shop that you can find in all of my video description links and you can get started there. Also, I'm actively taking on Notion clients. And so if you're interested in talking or chatting with me, you can find that link as well in the video description. It's the first time I'm sharing those details since creating the last 40 plus videos. And I think something I'll be trying to do is showcasing more of the work I'm doing so that I'm able to attract people who may want to receive individual consulting, guidance, creation, or whatever Notion related services that you might be interested in receiving from me. Alrighty. So Planning poker is a really great way to level set expectations among team members by answering important questions by numerically assigning values on a continuum between 0 and 100. These thought provoking questions are ultimately meant to level set expectations on various topics, processes, and more so that the team can agree to move forward with sprints and other project management related tasks and so on and so forth. In this template, I've created a facilitator page and a participants page so that we can separate who shares the screen with the team members during the virtual call or physical. I think it can work both ways and how we break down a 10 question, 10 person planning poker notion template, which allows you to track all your sessions and all your answers from every person. Unlike other free versions that are available online that are temporary, and untrackable, this template will show you in real time and capture the mean, min, max, and unique values for each question that the facilitator shares with the group. Obviously, you don't have to use all 10 questions or 10 person slots, but from a scalability perspective, I just started with those numbers. So in this video, I'm going to show you how this works between facilitator and participants, and hopefully it's pretty intuitive for you as a viewer. Once you download and duplicate this page onto your dashboard, the way you get started is just by clicking on new poker session. And it might take a second to load because it's a series of databases and pages that will help structure each poker session. And so every new poker session will have its own page and have its unique databases to track all the numbers across all the questions. So now that that's been created, this is what an individual planning poker session page looks like. This template is designed to separate all participants from the facilitator page. And if you are the person running it, you would click on the facilitator page. There's instructions throughout this whole template so that you don't have to rely on my guidance in this video and you can just read the instructions as well as it's pretty straightforward. At least I tried to make it that way. So again, we want to set up the questions and we have the questions like this. You might have to adjust the order of questions, but basically we can describe the question in the question context and we can also ask the question within the name. Basically, I just added that random question as a facilitator and I can go back. Next, once you've basically written all your questions out, again, you don't have to have all 10 questions filled. It's totally optional. Next, you're going to want to name all the relevant people in your session so that when you share a link to all your team members, you only have to share one link and everyone can hover to their title page so that every person on your team has their own space to answer these questions. So you go to the participants page and again, you have 10 toggles and every toggle has page stored under it in which it is titled the person's placement which stores a database for all the questions related to the session again there's 10 question slots you don't have to use all of them you only have to use what you need because everything is automated and so if it remains empty all the other questions will be empty as well so once you've named the toggle and or the page of, of all your team members, you can go back to facilitator page. And now we want to share the participants page and allow all team members to access the page you just edited. We're going to go to the participants page and we're going to go to share and we can share with individual emails, which is helpful. I think regardless of whether you share it or share a published link, Notion might encourage or force users to create account or sign in temporarily with the signed in Gmail account or other email program so that we can make edits to this planning poker session. I think that may be the biggest 
sort of barrier to the use of this is that if users don't have a Notion account and are taking part into this planning poker session, Notion will basically prompt every user to sign or create an account before they can make edits. With that being said, as the facilitator, that also allows you to track everybody's edits and modifications throughout this page, which can be helpful if you're trying to understand a specific individual's changes or modifications to the template. In our case, we'll just publish the web and make it easy on ourselves. We're going to allow editing and comments. And then once we have that, you can copy the web link. You can enter that web link into the browser. And I'm going to pretend as if I'm a participant within this one planning poker session. So notice how when I get go to this page, it prompts me to edit, search, and duplicate. Obviously, we don't need to duplicate it. We just need to edit it. So we're going to click on edit. And as you can see, it lets you know that people can see edits. We can now see this. You can now edit this page and we can hover to done editing when we're done with the session. Again, in my case, I'll hover to person one title name, view the 10 database properties that we're filling in to participate in this planning poker session. What I did basically is something that all users will need to do. And again, because I was already signed in into a Notion account, editing the page was seamless. If you don't have a Notion account and you're not logged in while opening the link, immediately prompt you to log in. So that's the sort of thing that I'd be cautious and wary about. Now that basically I'm a participant of this planning poker session, I'm going to go back to as if I was a facilitator and I was sharing the screen with the participants. Now that I've shared the link, I can go to the main screen. And now when I go to this page, I see 10 toggles, each title with a question. And the idea is when you click on each toggle, it will summarize the scores, the average, the range, the max, min. And then it'll also show all the unique number entries within a rollup. And then it'll also show the name of the question based on what we've created here. So if we were to kick off this planning poker sesh and we want to start it with question one, the facilitator would click on this toggle while sharing their screen. It would look like this. And as you can see, because we edited the name of the question in that database earlier, it shows question one. So now if I were to go back as a participant and we were participating as team members, and I said 51 as my numerical answer to question one, it would also appear on this main dashboard that the facilitator is sharing because currently there's only one entry. Obviously everything is going to become that number. And as you can imagine, the more people you share and the more numbers are filled out, the variability is going to show within these quick summaries. And you have the ability to see this as a group right after everybody has submitted an answer. And we can check if everyone submitted an answer by seeing that all entries are 100%. As you can imagine, you just rinse and repeat that for however many questions that you end up naming and editing. And by the end of this, you'll have a clean database of all of these numbers. And you have the ability to copy this link and share it within a meeting, within review sessions, or for teacher reference when you're asking similar or iterated questions using the agile methodology and planning poker gamification method. Hopefully that all made sense and I will definitely edit in the video link description about how many free copies of this template I'll be giving away after the publishing of this video so that I can gauge interest whether that's through comments, likes, so on and so forth and we'll go from there. So I think that was a rather long explanation video for a pretty simple thing but I'm curious to receive feedback on how people are able to use this and take advantage of this planning poker methodology within the Agile Scrum framework that many organizations operate on today. So thanks for watching. Even if you don't end up downloading or using this template, thanks for watching if you made it this far. And let me know if I should stop making these types of videos. Thanks.